not. Today's Friday, May 25th. We've got hardware news and nonsense and robots. And AI. Yes. And AI. So Those things. That's exciting. Our first story is that uh, AMD has integrated, or AMD has announced, or whatever, Ryzen Pro with Radeon Vega graphics. This is important because this is going to be what we see in laptops. Like, this is like the business class stuff. Ryzen Pro, really, there's not, like, as a consumer, you don't really buy Ryzen Pro CPUs directly. Oh, like, let's say that you're making laptops. You want to be able to buy those CPUs to just slot into the laptop that you put the engineering time into designing and making for a couple of years. And so Ryzen Pro is that for those OEMs. Um, they just have a press release, really. It's not, not a ton of information, I don't yeah, think. It's but. hard to get excited about it. Although, yeah. it does seem like the APUs are fairly decent as, you know, in terms of graphics. So if you've got a work laptop that you're forced to use... Maybe you could uh, squeeze in a couple of rounds of PUBG. Jockey for that. Well, the Ryzen 7 Pro, it's four cores, eight threads, uh, 10 CUs for the graphics, 3.8 gigahertz maximum boost, 12 to 25 watts. I mean, that's a relatively low wattage for that much compute plus graphics horsepower. Uh, also, kind of related to this, sort of kind of, AMD's just released the new Adrenaline software. So if you were using, like, the AMD platform stuff plus the graphics drivers, that's all been unified now. So that all works together. So if you've got Vega and like Vega in your APU and an add-in Vega card or something like that, all that works fine now, which is was not previously the case. You sometimes had to juggle drivers. So that was not a lot of fun, but that's exciting. <laughs> and not to be outdone, actually to, to be outdone in every, outdone. every possible way is <laughs> Intel. The first 10 nanometer Canon Lake laptop has been spotted online, the Lenovo IdeaPad 330. It is a 10 nanometer. It's the first Intel 10, 10 nanometer CPU. Intel expected to be in mass production now, and by golly, they are with the crappiest i3 of the line. It's so crappy that its, it's model number starts with an 8. So it's 8,000 series, so they're saying it's 8th generation. That's how not proud of the CPU that Intel is. Also, all of the advertisements I noticed on this page were in Chinese, but it's because they're only selling it in China, correct? Yeah, it's a Lenovo laptop. Whereas the AMD story was basically a press release that an Antec put their name on, this was not because there was no press release. <laughs> Intel is not proud. <laughs> Intel is very far. As you may or may not know, Intel is having some yield problems with 10 nanometers, and they've told shareholders that... We're not going to be shipping 10 nanometer in volume until 2019, about a year away, give or take. So, yeah. But if you want to be the first to have it, this $400 laptop from China, <laughs> you'll be able to brag that you're 10 nanometer. <laughs> core i3, 80, 8121U, dual core, four threads, 2.2 gigahertz, 3.1 gigahertz turbo, question mark on that. Uh, Radeon RX 540, 2 gigs, 1 SODIMM, 4 or 8 gig. Uh, looks like it's available in two sort of low-end configurations. One interesting thing about this, though, is this Core i3 does support AVX 512, according to Intel. So Intel is rolling in that AVX 512. That's one of the key differentiators between Intel and AMD at this point in terms of, like, instruction availability on the CPU. So the i3 is getting AVX 512, which is sort of surprising. Sadly i3 is not going to cut it in terms of like volume production or anything, but we'll see how this develops. It's interesting that that's the first 10 nanometer CPU. Microsoft is announcing Xbox adaptive controller for players with disabilities. This is actually amazing. Yeah, there's all kinds of little... It's like a whole suite of little gizmos and gadgets. This is your controller, but depending on if you need, you know, a foot pedal or mash buttons or if you can manage with something like this, you can get those and plug into this and do whatever. They've even got the straw. Oh, yeah, so, the blower. Where's that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. It's I saw the, the, the thing for, like, if you have bottom. no hands, you can, But, like... yeah, this... Uh, one of the guys at Microsoft actually is missing fingers on his left hand. So this was his pet project, I think. And uh, pretty amazing. I think if you spend enough money here and put together enough stuff, almost everybody can play Xbox games. <laughs> so how long until people abuse this to get the mouse and keyboard on Xbox games to just totally dominate at first-person shooters? Yeah, that's true. What a terrible, terrible way to use this. I think it's about a hundred bucks plus the cost of those peripherals, probably pretty high. So it ain't gonna be cheap. But if it's the only way you can play, probably worth it. Oh well, yeah, and if that's something you really enjoy, I would say it's worth it. 
Circuit Breaker has an article that says that Google is making a new augmented reality headset with a new Qualcomm chip. Now, this is, I'm sure, a stock photo of Google Glass. I don't think that this is... It looks like John Goodman from the future. <laughs> a more healthy John Goodman. Yeah. Much younger. Younger, yeah. <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't think that... I don't know. I, you think maybe that Google got one of the HoloLens things from Microsoft? Because those are damned impressive in terms of augmented reality. And they're like, oh, we should probably do this. Because they're putting the compute and everything on the headset, what it sounds like. Yeah, they do talk about the HoloLens in this article. And I don't think they want it to be exactly the same. But they are definitely... They, they looked at the performance of Google Glass. And they said, <laughs> oh... We really missed the mark here, didn't we? Maybe we should do something else with this augmented reality stuff. So this is going to be it, I guess. Speaking of things that miss the mark, how cool <laughs> do you imagine it is when I say RoboFly is the first flying insect micro robot to go tetherless? I was pretty excited looking Look at, at this, this article. This picture, this it's picture so cute. is so impressive. Uh, I mean, it's tiny. This is, this is like some spy stuff right here. It weighs the same as a toothpick. Look at that little guy. He's he precious. Up. Now, you're, you're excited about this, right? But spoiler alert, it's a little bit underwhelming. Why don't you show that video? Show the video. Scroll down to see. Because the video really, it, it kind of, it changes how you feel oh, about it. Oh, wait. No, that's an that's ad. That's at the very bottom. Yeah, yeah replay an ad. ad. No. Keep going. Keep going. That's an image. There, it's there it one. is. Yeah. Yeah. This is slowed down. <laughs> this is. That's, <laughs> look, so... it, it made it off the ground. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. And the reason that it's it's barely performing there is that little photo, photovoltaic cell is being hit with a laser. As soon as it moves and the laser can't hit it anymore, the little fly loses all power. And so it just blink. You're going to need a laser that can track it at very high speeds. And they didn't invest in that part of it. so It's a nice <laughs> proof of concept, I guess. Yeah, like... We're talking about maybe an RFID-powered version, which would be really cool. But it might increase the weight a little bit. It doesn't bit, do it? that. Does that, does that, if we do that much energy in radio frequency, does that mean cancer? Is that ionizing radiation? Is Probably. That a swarm of cancer. They, <laughs> they sort of pressed this, the interviewer pressed this guy and it was like, what are we actually going to use these for? Like, what is the point? And the one use case he came up with was checking for gas leaks. So he expected like, open up a suitcase full of these guys and turn on the RF transmitter and they just swarm through a building looking for gas. Hmm. Don't you just do that with canaries? <laughs> train could. I think these guys would shit less. <laughs> Probably. And they, you know, less to clean up when they die when they find the gas leak. True. Or you could just get some cats. Poop less, a higher chance of cancer, though. Which, which would you rather uh, have, toxoplasmosis <laughs> or cancer? It's a slider. Yeah. <laughs> Choices. New York City has announced plans to test algorithms for bias. So, yeah. Uh, this is, We've done a few stories where algorithmically like purely algorithmically chosen abc xyz seems to exhibit racial or gender bias and so this has not escaped the the eyes of people in new york city and so they're saying maybe we should check for that well something like this like developing an algorithm like this by its very nature introduces bias because it's going to start looking for patterns like and yeah. sometimes those patterns aren't what we want to see but and often stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason unfortunately and so yeah i don't know how do you just hard code certain tolerances into the system and then once you've done that aren't you introducing bias at a human level yeah <laughs> it's going to be a difficult problem and i'm not sure how you would ever solve that with software would uh would a an ai that was analyzing this news program start to conclude that i have really terrible bo because i've been wearing the shirt for an entire week <laughs> <laughs> It's like, man, these guys stink. I think the, the AI might actually figure out our secret. <laughs> based on other clues. Walmart has given up replacing its store cashiers with machines. So when I read the headline, I thought, oh, they're talking about self-checkout. That's not really what they're talking about at all. They're talking about their mobile app that checks you out. So. That's, uh, that's not too surprising. Not... Not to say that everyone who shops at Walmart is maybe, like for most people who shop at Walmart, having grown up in a town that had very few shopping options, Walmart was one. Well, the Walmart was kind of one of those things that's like, you know, not always the smartest people, people who aren't really tech savvy, not really going to Walmart. <laughs> well, the article says that, you know, that they're putting cashiers back, but 
it doesn't really say what's happening with the self checkout thing. It's it's mostly talking specifically about like the mobile checkout app, which I think is yeah. different than self checkout. It's yeah. scan and go. So the idea of that app is rather than check out all at once, as you pick up an item, you scan it. And then you pay and you leave. And yeah, Walmart shoppers just not adopting that. Well, I suspect too, the ones who are quote unquote adopting it, I wonder if they're just stealing. Because, I mean, what's well, to stop you? It's got some, I, I imagine part of it is you have to stop and let the greeter root through your stuff, you know, like you do at the big discount clubs. And it's like, do I really want to spend the time doing that at that point? Like, no wonder it's not taking off. I don't know. If I had a if I had a, a grocery cart that had the bags in it already and I just walked around putting stuff in and it was no more complicated than just blooping the thing over some sort of scanner, I would be all about that. That's what it is, but your phone is the scanner. Yeah, no uh, human interaction. Struggling with the phone for that. That is actually less work than self-checkout. So Walmart should but, first get rid of self-checkout, then that. But see, what you described puts the technology on the cart. And we all know that the carts are the most stolen item <laughs> at every store. There's so, one in our dumpster right now. Yeah. And we don't even have a big homeless population. Imagine Seattle. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. Well, it's just it's such a versatile construct. I mean, it, it is. It could be a house. It could be a, a transportation <laughs> thing. It could, every just... dystopian novel and movie teaches us that the shopping cart is an extremely valuable tool. <laughs> You're not wrong. I believe that. This Boston restaurant has uh, put robots in in place of chefs and so if you should go watch this video because this is probably how a robotic restaurant is done correctly i kept looking for something to criticize here these students from mit i think have figured it out because they didn't try to do everything with robots they just tried to do some of the stuff with robots yeah my first question is so the way this works is it's basically like just a big hopper and then all the prepared ingredients are thrown in and then it rotates it and cooks it and then dispenses it and then you can add your fixings but my first thing was like well how do they clean it does it just do dispense that one type of food? But it has like a steam cleaner and everything. Yeah. They've thought of everything. They've thought of it. They put a lot of thought into it. It's exciting. And you get to watch. And it's sort of like a subway where all the extra fixings are at a little bar with a sneeze guard in front of you. So it does the major cooking. It's basically stir fry. I think pretty much every, yeah, it's every like rice and dish is a bowl and it's basically doing a stir fry. And then they go and they put the extras like sour cream and guacamole and stuff on top of that. So there are human hands. And I imagine... Humans have to chop all the stuff and get it ready. So really, it's just robots cooking. The word chef may be a little <laughs> misleading. Maybe <laughs> line cook is yeah. better, but it is perfect every time. You don't have to think about it. Well, that's a pretty cool thing. They also had a Michelin star chef, Danielle, I think is, is how his name is pronounced. Danielle Boulard. It could Boulard. be Danielle is in the a girl name. No, no, it's no, a no, guy. It's, it's, a uh. dude. it's a French guy. <laughs> Come and, on, guys. And... Uh, and so he's like, no, I can't believe that this is actually working. I was like, he was like, I was intrigued when they contacted me. And then we, we figured it out. We figured out the formula. And it's actually good. The He talks about the repeatability. He's like, well, you know, once yeah. you figure out the recipe, it's very consistent. It's very repeatable. Well, that's actually the Michelin star rating system. Consistency is one of the big keys for that. Like, they don't just go to a restaurant once. They'll go multiple times to make sure that they're serving the same consistent food every time. And you can't not do that with these things. Plus, seven fifty a bowl. Yeah, not bad. You get a big bowl of stuff, and it, it, you, it's all kiosk ordering. So it's a whole. You go in, you punch your order in, you watch it cook, you get your bowl. It's a fun afternoon. If you're an idiot like me and you can't talk to people, <laughs> this is a system for you. If a buffet is too much social interaction for you, this is perfect. <laughs> Although they did mention that there's a, uh, like a. I think it's a, they gave it a French name, but it's like a person who will help you if you're too stupid to do the kiosk. <laughs> okay. So they're kind of floating around in case you're a Walmart customer. <laughs> well, the next time I'm in Boston, I will definitely go so we can get some footage for level one, assuming they're still in business. I imagine this, they'll branch this out quickly. It'll be major cities. We probably won't get one. Oh, but, yeah. you know, I'm sure New York's going to get one and probably... I've been getting a lot of banner ads lately for uh, like to try to franchise frozen yogurt, and they're like, "No employees, totally robotic frozen yogurt franchise." Click here to find out more, and it's like, I'm not clicking that. Well, the local frozen yogurt place is all self serve. It's so almost it's, employee free. Yeah, yeah. it's just like yeah. one employee that runs everything. So, 
Maybe know. maybe we should get in on that and alpaca farming because I see ads for that all the time. We'll use the alpaca milk to make the yogurt. Oh. Well, if you click the link and we're watching the video while we were explaining it to you and the food looked amazing and delicious and whatever, allow us to correct that situation because now we're going to talk about AI that identifies patients at higher risk of cholera by examining their poop. Well, <laughs> well it's not necessarily the poop. It's, In it's, fact, it's only anal swabs. <laughs> there goes our monetization. Anal swab. Um, monetization's got no hope once we get to the nonsense section. Oh, you know, this yeah. video is never going to be monetized. Just, uh, yeah, smoke them while you got them on this one. <laughs> Now's a good time to join the Patreon. Because <laughs> we got to eat. So, well... You're thinking, what what do they do with these anal swabs? Do they let dogs smell them, or you know, <laughs> do they put them on slides and observe them with a microscope? No, actually, they feed them to an AI. And they can... feed them. That's an interesting <laughs> word choice. I got a mental picture of Bender just going, oh, <laughs> <laughs> the anal swab. straight, straight from the source, <laughs> fresh from the kitchen. Yeah, so that's how they can, they, they're analyzing your gut bacteria. I think this is this is they're onto something with this because. I think gut bacteria is going to play a, a major factor in healthcare in the future for all sorts of diseases because we're doing crazy stuff manipulating gut bacteria for desirable results in, in certain patients. It's unfortunate yeah. that it has to do this for cholera because cholera is one of the easiest infections to prevent. It's literally yeah. just boil your water. But, like, it's a, but it's a problem. And this is in India, in Bangladesh. Yeah. What was the name of the, the institute? It in was like the Diarrheal Medicine Institute or something. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> they got oh. a whole building. Uh, well, it's not, it's not just in India. It's Duke University, Massachusetts General Hospital, and the International Center for Diarrheal oh, Disease Research. Internet, but I bet it's based in India. <laughs> DDR. Although, not you know, Dance Dance Revolution. You talk about uh, the, worst kind of the gut microbe thing, and it, um, they have had some incredible incredible like you read about these stories and it's like just pull the poop out of this guy put it in this guy and it's going to cure everything that's wrong with him but you don't see him follow up much with that and i, I wonder if it's like the u.s insurance industry is like no no you're not going to do that we we're not going to support this research we'll not be doing that we can't afford the lawsuits from what, from the poop transplant gone wrong oh well, they can't afford to cure diseases <laughs> well florida a uh, florida county is working to battle diseases through a federal drone program. So they, they've got these hunter-killer drones. I don't even think that's real. Yeah, I think it's, it's another stock photo. <laughs> yeah. They said this one's like the size of a fridge, right? It's yeah, huge. Yeah, they're big. Yeah, so I can't imagine that you could hunt mosquitoes with something so large. That would be like hunting a whale with a... <laughs> it just mashes them like... <laughs> they didn't go into much detail, but I don't think they're like search and destroy. I think what they're doing is they're flying high overhead and... Identifying high mosquito areas, mm. but then, the thing that they're like manually, I don't know what they do after that. They didn't go into that, but the 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 new thing here is these guys are going to be allowed to fly autonomously, higher than usual, and without line of sight, and they're also going to be able to fly at night, which is something that Florida has not allowed previously. I don't think any state has. Mm -hmm. So it's cool, but also refrigerator-sized drone flying in the dark. With no operator. What could go wrong? Could be a terrible outcome. What if, it, what if you're just getting eaten alive by mosquitoes? Like you're camping, and it's like, man, this is a high mosquito area. And then it does something, and it like kills you. And then a refrigerator falls on you? Yeah. Didn't, didn't Bill Gates provide funding for one of those, those laser drones? That there was just like a, it was like a tabletop device, and it just used CCTV uh, or like some, some type of, of, of um, CCD camera or something. To track mosquitoes, and then it would when it saw a mosquito, it would just move a laser and just zap it. Yeah, but I don't think you can. Well, those aren't very mobile. Mm. It's hard to get those out in the Everglades. <laughs> Why is a government drone flying over a Sacramento neighborhood? The well, answer will shock you. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, I'll save you the read, and it's because crime. They're patrolling for crime, and apparently, but it's just potential crime. Well, no, it said that they caught they got some people that were trespassing, and they got somebody some other sort of petty crime. illegal garbage dumping. I oh think. yeah, illegal garbage dumping. Not so. picking up after your dog after it poos. But this has been reported by people who have noticed that there's a drone hovering, watching them <laughs> all the time. We're gonna go sunbathe in my backyard. Just... Yeah, and yeah. it literally is a drone watching it all the time. They defend it by saying that it's so high. That it can't tell individual faces. 200 feet. But 
We definitely have cameras that can do that. I mean, we've got cameras that can tell your license plate from well, orbit. You know, so. And it's a disturbance, too, because like, they're so loud. Drones are very loud when they're Well, at 200 feet, I doubt that you're hearing much of this one. Yeah. Maybe. They did say in the article that the original the drones were originally restricted to like 350 feet, but somehow that was too far away, and they needed to be closer to be able to tell what's going on. So it's close enough to tell that somebody is illegally dumping but far enough away that they can't be identified, that doesn't ring true. Yeah, that's not right. It's, uh, I think it's something that's going to catch on because people really, they need to express more outrage here because we're, we're literally, it's an eye in the sky, a mobile watcher at all times. And you know, I wonder how often they run this thing, like in a given week, how many hours? I don't have a good, a good sense of who's watching the watchers. Well, nobody. Well, a no Jeep one. Pie. Yeah. <laughs> Reese well, Cupman. That is uh, all the more reason to not have watchers in the first place if a Jeep Pie is in charge, because I don't believe that a Jeep Pie is capable of watching the watchers competently. Well, he's probably capable of it, but he's paid not to. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> Speaking what? of that exact same thing, somebody who's probably capable of it, but they're paid not to. The Candy Crush developers are doing a mobile Call of Duty. I was, I'm going to give that a 1 out of 10 segue. <laughs> <laughs> but no. It doesn't make much sense. No. <laughs> Who is being paid not to develop? Uh, so, no, well, it's so like Candy Crush. Candy Crush is not the type of game that Call of Duty is. And, and yet, why would they put the Candy Crush developer in charge of porting Call of Duty to mobile? And I'll what? tell you why. It's because... Candy Crush gets in your brain, and then you just have to give it money. Yeah, well, they well, might not just be just digging a hole right now. <laughs> they might not be great at making a shooter, but they're incredible at making a game that keeps you paying money over and over and over. And that's what this is going to be. I, I we put this in the nonsense section because we didn't really have a gaming section this week. I so. don't get mobile shooters, but they seem to be getting more and more popular. I, I don't understand how. I, I guess a lot of people don't have computers, really, or like maybe don't want to invest in a console that can run the game, so they think, but well, I'll just do it on my, on my phone. It's like shooting pool with oven mitts on. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I'm not saying that it's going to be a good experience, but I mean, if you're prohibited by cost, which a lot of times it's kids who are playing it on mobile, so that might be why. But with all the microtransactions, like, why not just save up your money and get a and PC? Get an actual, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't really need much in the way of a PC these days to do any kind of game. Get some of those Ryzen APUs. Yeah. Oh, the, the i5s are real cheap, uh, right? Uh, the R5s are like 200 bucks. Yeah. So. I kind of doubt our audience is the people who need to be convinced that they should buy a PC. How many, <laughs> how many Call of Duty loot crates is that? Like 20? Uh, like three. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Fortnite is... Uh, becoming an addiction and a major uh, I think this is overstated it says it's becoming a problem for Major League Baseball one yeah. guy had oops, one guy had uh, one case of carpal tunnel and now it's an epidemic well they did not actually it, there was no guarantee that his carpal tunnel is related to Fortnite but he is known to be a bit of a Fortnite addict <laughs> and they've also had some reports of guys maybe staying up a little too late before game day, <laughs> playing so, Fortnite, and then one guy the from the Brewers played it on the jumbotron. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe poor timing, considering that. But yeah, they're just saying that. Hey, you're being paid thirty million dollars to play this other game. Maybe focus on that. <laughs> I don't think Fortnite's a problem. They Fortnite's should go into the streaming fun. game. I bet. I bet people would pay a ton of money to watch a Major League Baseball. Player. There used to be a UFC fighter who would stream himself playing the UFC video game. And he got a lot of views, I think. Yeah. That's what, the, that's what that guy should be doing. He's, he's playing stupid. Then there was that guy who was pretending to play the UFC game oh, while yeah. actually streaming the UFC game. That guy was brilliant. <laughs> Probably got banned, but took one for the team, I guess. Hmm. Well, if you're you know wealthy beyond the dreams of avarice, I've got some good news for you. You can have your own cryptocurrency floating haven outside the reach of terrestrial governments yeah so this is going to be a floating pacific island and you can have you know uh, uh, i don't know what would you what would you call this an assembly like a houseboat that can connect with other houseboats to like assemble and make like a justice league i don't it's basically just a floating pier yeah and you can attach your home to it and they want this to so this is you i think you have to have a flag to put something in the water like that's the maritime rule so this is French Polynesia, which I you get the idea. It's just like, hey, do whatever you want. Just give us a cut. Yeah. And so the, the dream is there will be a cryptocurrency that all of these little floating 
countries is what they're calling them, even though that's not what it is, will use. And you can find the country that most meshes with your, your thinking and go there. So I'm going to recall the Google video from the news earlier in the week and say that, you know, all of the super wealthy, you know, Google stock people are going to go that are that believe in the, in the possible bright future version of that video are going to go and live on one of these islands and just sort of and silently the world will be killed and we won't even realize something has gone wrong. <laughs> well, I don't think we'll get to that point because <laughs> it's so, countries give you some very important things. The first being a military. <laughs> this is a very rose colored glasses kind of thing. I don't know what you're going to do if you're in one of these communities when the uh, Somali pirates roll up, <laughs> that's going to be a problem. For you, wouldn't that be exciting? Because, you know, you, you, you defend your homestead. I don't know. You don't want to fight a war in your house <laughs> because when they're shooting back, you're losing property value. I bet, I bet that these guys get internet before you find a house. <laughs> <laughs> that is another question. Of, you're not exactly going to have an undersea cable, so... What's your internet connection going to be like there? I don't. The people that are going to live here are going to be like the Jeff Bezoses of the world, and it's going to be like Jeff Bezos and like two or three other super villains, and like their support staff of two or three hundred that's keeping all the infrastructure running. But even Jeff Bezos can't beat physics. He's not going to be able to play PUBG on that satellite <laughs> no. connection. No. Oh well, would it, wouldn't it be something though if he did have some sort of armored cable? Like there was just a cable coming off of a pier in San Francisco <laughs> that just went to this thing. <laughs> like a horrible anchor, but just yeah. internet connection. <laughs> Boat propellers keep cutting it in half. And <laughs> repair it again. Yeah. Money's no obvious. He sends one of his butlers down in the swim. <laughs> Twenty-four hour scuba butlers. I mean, Bezos could afford it. Well, that's, that's the title of this, this episode. It has to be twenty-four hour. Scuba butlers. Scuba butlers. <laughs> it's, uh, it is a nice idea if you don't think about a lot of the little details. Uh, Krista brought up a good one, which is hurricanes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, yeah, what if there's a horrible storm? Like, you just <laughs> disassemble, flee, there, run away. There are only a few months of submarine technology research away from literally creating Bioshock. <laughs> or remember the in the old uh, Super Friends cartoon, the Legion of Doom had that <laughs> submersible... <laughs> And it was run by, uh, what's the Superman's arch nemesis? Uh, Lex Luthor. And Jeff Bezos is basically Lex Luthor. So, ah, maybe? We're living in a comic book. We're literally living in the comic book timeline with Lex Luthor. That's exciting. But we don't have Superman. <laughs> well, you win some, you lose some in the dark timeline. Speaking of the dark timeline, uh, UK government is going to allow citizens to head to the nearest newsstands to buy porn licenses. <laughs> I like the, the way that headline is formatted. Yeah. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. So licenses. we, I think we did the story about the uh, porn filter, didn't we? We did. Yeah. When, how long ago was that? That was a long time ago. A few ago. weeks ago, I think. Or maybe a few months ago. I think it might have been last year sometime. Anyway. UK you, is messed up. You've probably show. heard, yeah, that to protect the kids, they wanted to filter all online porn, and you had to identify yourself with a credit card. I think it was a credit card, right? Yep. To prove that you're old enough to view the porn. That hasn't gone well. No. Well, it's blocking too much. Uh, there's, it's not, not very effective, as you might imagine, since the internet, the infrastructure, the internet infrastructure itself is literally held together with pornography. I, I would mean. say that you would never, with the government infrastructure, no matter how many peop- bodies you threw at it, you're never going to filter porn at a rate higher than porn is created. <laughs> That there needs to be some kind of law, like you know, like Murphy's law or Moore's law. There needs to be a law that states that Ryan's law. <laughs> so you can go to your local newsstand, and the newsstand will check your ID because apparently, also the government having a, a, a database of all the people that have opted into porn is perhaps a bad thing. And they're only just now realizing this after all this has been implemented. So they're like, well, completely straight faced. The suggestion is you can go to your local newsstand. They can verify your ID and give you a card, and then the card will let you enter a 16-digit number or something, and then that will, you know, let you have it back. I feel like this is the most, like, British stereotype thing I've ever heard. You know, like, go stand in line, get your license. Like, that's, it's very, like, <laughs> Q, calm, Q, Q, up. Q, Q up, yeah, I, very British. Do, I wonder, though, like, if, if they don't hold any records here, if this is literally just show you my ID, you give me a card, is, there, is it going to be like Netflix sharing? 
I wasn't even thinking Netflix sharing. I was just thinking, you know, that one kid whose birthday happens to line up the right way can just go and buy a <laughs> bunch true. of those from the newsstand and then just go oh, make like five hundred dollars selling yeah. it to his oh, friends. Or the aftermarket. Yeah. Because does is there a limit to how many I can buy? Because it could be like game keys. I mean, how many newsstands are there? Even if the newsstand guy has perfect recall. To be like, wait, you already bought an ID for me. You could just buy them from all over town. You could or, make so much money. Or you could, you know, like the uh, the immigrant population, you know? <laughs> it's like, hey, a little old lady with 20 kids, I'll give you this much money for you go and buy a porn license. <laughs> and then that goes right online for resale. Oh, huh. th- they could make a lot of money doing that. That's true. Hmm. We're gonna Good have job, UK that. government. <laughs> You've really solved the problem. <laughs> Oh, also, this headline was a lot of fun. Online candidates forum has been hacked by a pornography video. So this this wasn't really anything. It's like North State. I don't even know where this is. Yeah, it didn't seem like it was a Green Party thing, and it, it doesn't seem like it was uh, well attended or viewed. Maybe they didn't have the best technology, but uh, Redding, California. Yeah, oh, yeah. They were they were hacked with some homosexual pornography. Well, and apparently. When it started happening, they're like, "Oh, it's happening again." <laughs> <Yeah>. Which <laughs> turn it off. What What happened the first time? <laughs> Those darn internet trolls. Yeah. That's sad. A... Sad that our democracy has come to that. One of the top comments on that article was like, uh, "You assume that the sex act that might be going on in homosexual pornography, it's like, isn't that government? Isn't that what government does to us?" <laughs> <laughs> Because you just got the audio from it? I mean, I just... No, the live streaming people got video, too. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, for a second or two. It said they cut it off pretty quick, so I guess they, I guess their button was on the trigger. <laughs> you, said you yanked the plug on that one. <laughs> <laughs> quick. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Speaking of uh, yanking the plug, <laughs> not related. Uh, a robot has stood in for a U.S. student at graduation. So Cynthia was really sick because she's in the hospital and she couldn't go to graduation. Not like, to, well, not, she's there, though. Not to worry. We've got an iPad on a stand. Okay, <laughs> play, because you have yeah. to watch it. The video is, it's hilarious to watch Ignore this the little, caption. Just watch it. Oh, no. You, 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 stop zooming through it, Wendell. Stop scrubbing. Right, no, it's like, yeah, there. There, there, there you go. <laughs> okay. That's what I was looking for. Just. So, yeah, it had a camera, so she actually could watch what was going on. Now, I have a huge problem with this video, though, because in the video, the iPad is wearing a cap. And then she's in the hospital bed also wearing a cap. You can't wear double caps. Everyone totally, knows that that yeah. is an etiquette thing. I was totally immersed <laughs> up until that point. I believed that the iPad was her, but then I saw that and I was like, I can't do this anymore. I need about six of these for meetings. <laughs> Anybody want to sponsor level one? <laughs> they've already, they've you already, did try to rig one up once. I did. They've already got the remote managers, I think in Japan, that just roam around the office and spy on you. <laughs> you get back to work now! So yeah. at least this is a, a good use of that. You know, they're using it for good, that same technology. I would like to, uh, there's a lot of things in my life that I would like to, like if, if one of my friends has a wedding, send the iPad. How great would that be? <laughs> I can't make it, but here's my iPad. Yeah. What about, well, can you, do you get to keep the iPad or do you just send a gift to? Uh, if they want an iPad, we can make that the gift. <laughs> Take this. You can keep my telepresence <laughs> iPad. I can be with you at all times. But I get to connect to it anytime I want. It's <laughs> a bad deal. Well, our next story comes to us from Women at Forbes by Kitty Knowles. <laughs> I didn't notice that this was Women Kitty at Forbes. Forbes. <laughs> so uh, we've got uh, some we've got some new technology for the bedroom here. Uh, I um I didn't see how this was a tech story, and I was like, do we really need to include this? But it actually um along with connecting you with your spouse. <laughs> It also connects to your phone. Well, so, this company, kind of tech, I guess. Mystery Vibe. So this company has made a lot of products for women, and they're all Internet of Things. They're all, you know, connected to your Android and iOS and all that stuff. But this is the first one for men. Well, I think actually the, the article goes out of its way to point out that it's for both parties in a couple uh, simultaneously. We'll pop that, uh, we'll, we'll go over the features here if you pop that <laughs> image back up there. Is it, do you want that one or do you want the other we'll get one? Get the big this one. This is where we're going to get demonetized. We're going to look at the big one. <laughs> if you guys were wondering what story it was, this is probably it. It's okay yeah, on Forbes, but it's not okay on YouTube. What kind of hypocrisy is this? That's just... So, we'll move uh, from left to right. Now that top portion, that's the clitoral stimulator <laughs> right there. So that's for your partner. And then you got the, the two... 
the circles below that. So that is the that is the part that grips your shaft. And uh, so, I, so the orientation would be like that way, right? Yep, that's right. So that, this is this is not. Now that's the you're getting ahead of me. That's the perineum stimulator or the taint that's is more commonly known. Because you need that during your sexual encounter. <laughs> And then you got uh, the underside there. You got two more vibrators. I think those are also for the woman's pleasure, uh, you know, at the maximum penetration. Uh, the article is insane. Is is it's actually <laughs> incredibly detailed. Like it, it yeah. goes into the engineering and testing that went into this. It is actually the the level of technical engineering that went into this product is actually quite frankly. Why don't you scroll down to the faces of the founders? Because they're like the the one on the far left here. Like she looks like she's dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> she's pausing. Like I, I tell you, the thought in her head right now is news coverage just like this. That, she's like, <laughs> it's oh. that thousand yard stare of. My face is going to be on an article with this forever. <laughs> but here's I have a question about this because. Obviously, for this kind of device, you need a certain amount of uh, waterproofing, right? How do you charge this thing? Well, inductive charging. It's the only way to go. You think? Yeah. Is that not mentioned in the article? I didn't, yeah. I, I'll be honest. I, I didn't read this whole article. Because <laughs> what do you think the battery life is? Like Long first, enough. First session? Probably. Maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> the world we live in folks they spy on us they follow our phone numbers and what do we get in return vibrating toys i just it's the the iot of the bedroom those are not things that should be in the same (laughs) sentence why is that call me old-fashioned but i just thought why Why? yeah we'll see if you still have that uh you're singing that same tune after you've had your taint stimulated I wish we could turn that into the title, but I didn't know <laughs> it might flag our channel completely. Yeah, the entire channel would probably not just like the video, the entire channel. But again, Forbes, Forbes, and, and it apparently world. has some sort of stats. I guess this is tagged as a technology story in women at Forbes. I don't know. Forbes. This is definitely a technology story. I don't. I, don't see I wasn't can, sure it was until I saw that it has an app associated. Even with if it, it doesn't have an app. It's got electric motors. <laughs> that counts. It's technology. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's technology to get you there faster or something. Is that the thing? It's like you don't because you, your busy life. There's not enough time for things, <laughs> so it's like you can't can't be slow and take it the old fashioned way anymore. You just it's gotta gotta turn the intensity up to eleven. Well, you know, it, we're not good at that at level one. Maybe it's the the level of you know the ubiquity of online pornography has raised the bar <laughs> so you can't get stimulated for natural means anymore. That is actually a, a thing, unfortunately. <laughs> wow. That's what a what a what a horrible world we live in. <laughs> what a time to be alive. Like we've a, got I keep, I keep saying the darkest timeline, well, but it just gets darker. We've got the Lex Luthor, no Superman, and this. <laughs> Marvel, Marvel, everyone thought that the end of the, the new Marvel movie was very dark. I think that this reality is darker. That's DC, <laughs> you Philistine. No, the new Marvel movie. But there was also a new Marvel movie. I was making I was trying to make another topical joke. I haven't seen the new Marvel movie. I just know it's, it's, the ending is sad. Spoiler. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, it's time to end the news here. We will see you next week. Like and Try to forget about this article. Favorite. Check out the store. I don't know. Look at these. We've got this in embroidery as well. So, see you next week. Bye.